Good morning and welcome to the News Hub. I'm Jeff Rogo, in today for Simon Constable. It was another busy weekend for news around the world. Leading off our show, a freelance American writer who had been held captive for nearly two years in Syria was freed over the weekend. The release comes just days after a rival group beheaded another U.S. reporter. Joining us from Washington to discuss the decision is the Wall Street Journal's Diane Nissenbaum. Thank you so much for joining us, Diane. Hey, Jeff. How are you? So let's cut to the chase. Do we have any clues as to why Peter Theo Curtis was released? No, we don't at this point. We, we know that the government in Doha, Qatar, was, was directly involved. The family had made a, an appeal to them because they had been successful in getting other hostages out uh, that had been held in Syria. Uh, Doha in the past has apparently paid ransoms of millions of dollars to help other uh, hostages get out, but in this case the family said they were told that negotiations were being done without a ransom being involved. But they also say they're not aware of the circumstances that led to uh, his release. And what has been the reaction in Washington? We've seen political leaders over the weekend make comments. What has been the, uh, the word on the ground there in D.C.? I think everyone was was very heartened uh, to have an American released uh, in the wake of uh, James Foley's uh, killing. Uh, the complication here, of course, as you mentioned at the start, is, the, is that uh, he was held by a, a rival group um, from Mr. Foley. Uh, Mr. Foley was killed by the Islamic State, uh, and the Islamic State is holding at least one other American journalist, Steve Sotloff, and has threatened to kill him if the U.S. airstrikes uh, continue. Uh, so Mr. Curtis's family made an appeal to them uh, for mercy, as uh, many government officials have as well. But uh, they don't think that um, Mr. Curtis's release will have uh, a real impact on uh, Mr. Sotloff's fate. And ISIS demanded that the U.S. stop uh, air assaults. They haven't stopped, though it seems like they've, they've trimmed the, 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 the area a little bit. Is there a possibility that more journalists could be released, or how is that going to go forward next? Yeah, yeah, I think we're, we're, we're waiting to see here. As, as you noted, it is interesting that the U.S. has not expanded its, its uh, airstrikes, um, as might have been uh, expected um, in the wake of uh, Mr. Foley's uh, killing. Uh, we don't know what that's, what that's going to mean for uh, the Islamic State and, and what they're doing with Mr. Satloff. We don't know if that's going to impact uh, the U.S. administration thinking. We do know the administration is considering now airstrikes in Syria as well, which would be a dramatic expansion of the campaign. I think in this week coming up, we're going to see some evolution of the discussions here in Washington, and that will obviously have an impact um, on Mr. Sotloff's fate directly and probably the fate of other Americans held in Syria. And is that the what next that's in this story, looking at Washington's reaction over the course of the week? Is there anything maybe you're expecting in, in Syria or in the Middle East broadly that could sort of tell where this story is going to go from here? Well, there's a, there's a lot of moving factors here. The Islamic State is making advances inside Syria. They captured a major uh, military military base yesterday. Um, the airstrikes in, in Iraq will continue. They're trying to create the a coalition government in Baghdad, which the U.S. says is essential for helping to stabilize Iraq. Uh, these are all things that are in play. The administration has said that they are really rethinking what they want to do to combat the Islamic State and whether they need to expand what is now a very limited military objective in Iraq. So I think, yeah, we are going to see a lot this week, and, and it depends on what happens in, in the U.S., Syria, and Iraq. Thank you, uh, Diane, so much for joining us.